Welcome to the What is Next in the Social Justice Movement panel. I'm Autumn Johnson and I'll be your moderator. And I have two heavy headers for this panel, Elizabeth Williams and Tiffany Hayes, two WNBA stars for the Atlanta Dream. I'm so excited to keep pushing the conversation about social injustice with you all. And we're having these type of conversations in honor of Black History Month. So I wanna start off by asking, what does Black History mean, Month mean to both of you? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having us, you know, um, anytime that we can talk about these topics and have these conversations, we're just continuing to push the envelope. So I'm just grateful to be here. Um, but for me, Black History Month, I think it means even more now than it did in the past. I feel like, you know, when we're growing up in school, like you have Black History Month and you're like, oh, Martin Luther King, woo, Rosa Parks, yay. <laughs> But now I think we're, we're in this space where we're in more of like the activism role. And so it means even more, it's like, now we have to continue to have these conversations. We have to really push the envelope um, and we are creating our own black history for the future. So uh, I think for me, especially now, Black History Month has been really, really important. What about you, Tiffany? Yeah, I mean, same, just, just thinking about what she said, like as a kid, like, oh, we have our own month. Like, uh, just little things like that, but now you realize it's, it's from something bigger. It's from something that started a long time ago that needs to change, and we're still working on it to this day. So to be a part of something like that um, and try to push that narrative and you know make sure the movement doesn't die down and make sure it grows and grows so that we one day, maybe soon, maybe further down in the future, it actually happens that we don't have to go to the things that have been going on for years and years. Exactly. And this is a time that we're celebrating Black excellence, our history, our ancestors. But, you know, on that same breath, we're still honoring Black lives that were taken due to police brutality. So it just reminds us that there's still work to be done. What do you all think is next in the social justice movement? Oh, man, I think just continuing to engage, um, even thinking about the the voter turnout in the last election, it was like, unmatched you know like so I think just continuing this momentum making sure people are staying engaged you know now that we've understood the importance of voting and politics it's like okay now we have to hold these politicians accountable so that we do see these changes that we've been been talking about basically that 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 there actually is a next and not letting it die down that's basically what needs to happen next is make sure there is a next Right. You know, as professional athletes and leaders in our community, the dream was at the forefront of not only fighting for change in our community, but nationally. That was incredible. But how do you all plan on continuing to utilize your voice and platforms to just keep social injustice init initiatives going? Tiffany, you mentioned just what's next. Like, how do you guys keep that fire going? Yeah, I mean, you know, E was like in the center of that, in the bubble, you know, shout out to you, E. They were doing their thing in there. I was at home, you know, cheering from afar, but, you know, still with them with Zoom calls and whatnot. Uh, so, um, yeah, I just think it's important, like, to keep keep going as far as, you know, making sure people know that we're here and, like, we're not going anywhere. It's like, like, yeah, we got the politicians that we want, but now you have to do your job, you know? Like, we're not just going to stop because we got you here. Like, we want to make sure that, you're doing what you said. And like, we're gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing until it ain't no more pushing left. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I know Tip wasn't in the bubble, but she's got her black owned business, you know? So she's she's doing her version of the work, right? Like we need all of that. You know, we need the people that, that are working. We need the people that are organizing. We need the activists. Like we need all of those pieces for us to move forward like Tip was talking about. Yeah, Tiffany, you mentioned the wobble, so I definitely want to hit on that. How does the WNBA and the WNBPA continue to work together like the wobble and push for change? Um, I mean, more recently, our conversations have been more around COVID and about, you know, making sure people have the right information. Um, we've had calls with different doctors and virologists and, and people that kind of know how the vaccine was formed and just like, trying to stop the misinformation um, because ultimately this virus has affected black and brown communities more than other people. And so I think we're just gonna find unique ways to, to, um, 
to talk about our communities and to make sure that the work that we're doing, it might not necessarily be politics, like it might be more about finance, it might be more about businesses, it might be more about health, but just just continuing these conversations just in different spaces. Absolutely. Yeah, and the dream, I just recently found out that, you know, the Atlanta dream is one of four WNBA teams that recently partnered with its local Anthem affiliate within the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association just to combat food insecurity, mental health and health disparities in Atlanta. So what impact do you all hope this makes within this social justice initiative? Um, I mean, I, I think it's huge, you know, when we talk about like health disparities and communities of color that have been impacted, a lot of it is just due to not having the same resources as other communities. So I think with a partnership with Anthem, because they kind of understand that and, and understand like the deeper root of these problems, that's, that's a great way to, to start to make change from, from that level. And what changes have the both of you made in your own lives to live the change you want to see? Uh, well, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, um, I just been learning a lot. You know, I, I've never been big, big on books. I know that's probably bad to say out loud, but um, I'm still learning and growing as a person. And um, I just recently started uh, reading more books. I, I took a class. Um, learning about you know redlining and how blacks are like pushed out of their neighborhoods or you know for white people to move in and you know the ghettos and things like that like she was saying like now they don't have resources all they have is fast foods around their area and they don't have good healthy foods around um so learning little things like that uh learning more about business learning more about investing um learning about what uh, black owned businesses are around my area that I can support you know, little things like that. Like everything, every little thing helps. Like you don't have to be a part of some big group that does everything like uh, marching or going to whatever, like you can start with you first and then, you know, put that stuff out there, like on your social, if you want, um, wherever your, what your platform is. And of course, like he said, I started my business. I own a basketball gym now. So, um, you know, just trying to push myself as a black person. So someone looking up to me will see that and say like, I want to be like that, or I can do that, or, you know, don't let anything hold me back from doing what I want to do. So um, it can be anything from politics to doing your own thing, to using your social platform to anything. So I've been doing a little bit of all of it. <laughs> I love that. That's nice. Elizabeth, what about you? Yeah, I mean, it's similar. Uh, I mean, I don't have my own business. Like, I'm not, I'm not there. <laughs> but uh, as far as just trying to educate myself and learn and even learning the history, you know, like the Black history we're taught in school isn't like the full picture. So as I've realized how much more I need to learn and grow, I think as we understand that history, that's what allows us to make the changes that we want to make now so that we're not repeating the same mistakes that, that we've seen in the past. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing that I admire the most about, you know, the WNBA as a whole is that you all are continuously just fighting for change for the next ones up. So what is your dream for the next generation of Black athletes to experience? Man, um, just to be fearless, you know, I, I want them to want to have this league, right? And to be in this league that's grown tremendously. I think especially when you think about our union and we're just constantly trying to push the envelope so that the next people that come up, like they're the ones that end up with these million dollar contracts. Like we want to be the jealous older people, right? Like, so making sure that, that we're pushing so that the younger generation has something that they can look up to. So I would definitely, I would be down for being the, the older jealous generation. If, if it, if it comes to that, if it, if it, if it gets there, I'll be down with that. That's because that's growth. You see growth in the league. So how can you be mad at that? Exactly. And there's still a lot of work to be done as we try to navigate what's next in the social injustice movement. But what all are you most proud of from 2020? Um, I'm proud of, 
our team, especially, you know, E, like I said, they were in the rubble holding it down while I was at home trying to do my part. Um, I think our team definitely was a, was a big part in the social justice movement this summer. So um, I've done plenty of interviews while I'm all the way over here in Spain. And that's all I kept repeating over and over how I'm so proud of them and uh, how they were able to accomplish that and keep it going and how we're still going to be keeping it going this year. So that was my thing. I was, I was just proud of the team. Yeah, absolutely proud. And I think just finding our voice. Uh, I think this was a year because of the pandemic, especially like people had to self-reflect and kind of look at themselves because we just had all this extra time. Um, and so in that, I think finding my voice, our team finding our voice, despite everything that was going on, that I think that was, that's something that I'm most proud of. It was definitely inspiring to see. And I just love all that you guys did during the summer and that you're continuously still doing. But, you know, as we continue to celebrate, celebrate Black History Month, I just want to close out this panel by giving you all an opportunity to shout out any Black owned business that people should know about. Tiffany, you brought up a few, like, go ahead and just like, I, I'll give you guys. Yeah, shoot. Sure. You let me go through my Instagram. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh uh, man, you gonna put me on the spot. I don't know if I know them like off the top, but of course mine. You know, I got a uh, Hoop Nation ATL located in, right outside of Atlanta. Um, basketball recovery, uh, training, um, weightlifting. You know, all that type of stuff. So, if you need basketball in Atlanta, hit me up. And can we nice. find that on social anywhere? Yeah, Hoop Nation ATL. At okay. Hoop Nation ATL on Instagram. What about you, Elizabeth? Uh, I had two that came to mind. The first uh, is called Folk. They make beauty and face products. They send us some stuff in the bubble, and it's like all natural, really, really great stuff. Black owned, female owned. Uh, it's P H O L K. And okay. the other one is called Goal Setter. It's uh, also black and female owned. It's a financial literacy app for kids. And I think as we're talking about, you know, breaking all these barriers and, and erasing the history, I think financial literacy is a big part of that. So getting kids sign up for Goal Setter and learning about money and how to save is, is huge. So those are my two. I love it. I'm going to have to check out the skincare one for sure. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> but everyone just continue to support Black businesses, not just this month, but every month. And let's all continue to push for change to make this world an equal and better place for everyone. Thank you so much, Elizabeth and Tiffany, for an incredible conversation. And thank you to everyone who tuned into the What is Next in the Social Justice Movement panel.